welcome. Welcome to Need to Know Westford. I'm Kathy Ricketson. I'm Beth Morrison. And today we are covering uh, the upcoming vote, town vote on Tuesday, May 2nd. There, in addition to a number of wonderful candidates running for our all-important town board, select board, planning board, school committee, board of health, the library trustees, and the re-election of our town moderator, we have three ballot questions coming up. They are important questions, and today we have Jeff Goodwin, the Director of Facilities, to come and talk to us about question two, the repair of the Blanchard School roof. What is the state of the Blanchard School roof? Well, first off, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here to talk about this ballot vote. Um, the Blanchard roof uh, is has been in a state of disrepair for a few years now. Um, it's been plagued by constant leaking, uh, and it's affected the internal environment of the building uh, to the point where uh, recently our insurance deductible has gone up significantly on the building because we've had so many losses inside. Um, the existing membrane is original to the building, which was built in 1992. So uh, at 31 years old, it's beyond its reasonable, serviceable life at this point. So um, it's past due for replacement, and that's what we're hoping to address here with this project. So what do, what do we need to know? What do Westford voters need to know about the ballot question? And um, I don't know if you can explain why it's on the ballot or? Yeah. Um, so it's excluded debt, which is why it's a ballot vote. Um, so it's excluded uh, from Proposition 2.5. This is typically what happens with larger projects, similar to what we did with uh, the J.V. Fletcher Library last fall um, and the fire station back in 2015. So it is it's a significant cost to the town. Um, uh, the project in total is $6.5 million, roughly, um, but 48% of that is reimbursable from the MSBA. We were fortunate enough to be accepted into the Accelerated Repair Program from the MSBA. Um, and what that's is the a MSBA? competitive grant program, right? Yes, yes it is. Explain what the MSBA is. Uh, the Mass School Building Authority. So they are the, um, the authority on mass school buildings. Um, and uh, we are actually, um, like I said, we were fortunate enough to be accepted into the Accelerated Repair Program, which is for buildings such as Blanchard that have a urgent, immediate need for, for help. Um, it's interesting to mention too that uh, since we were accepted into the program, uh, the MSBA has actually paused the accelerated repair program since then due to the volatility in the construction market. So we were very lucky to get in when we when we did. So Yeah, that's a that's a, a huge um, bonus to this project because 48% is going to be covered with state funding. Um, so I think we're only bonding 3.4 million, which is um, for the median home valued at $600,000. It's $25 uh, increase in your tax bill for fiscal year 25. Um, and then it will decline after that because um, as a member of the finance committee, I've, I've seen many charts and graphs of our <laughs> <laughs> excluded debt. And uh, we've paid off quite a few projects in town, like the high school project and Chris Foley, and uh, I'm trying to remember the other projects, but there's several projects that are kind of being paid off. And so there's a room, um, as Dan O'Donnell likes to say, in our, um, so that it's not going to have a huge impact on um, the tax rate um, for each individual. Yeah, household. the town, the town finance department has worked really hard to make sure that you know we don't have huge spikes in our tax rate. That it's pretty consistent over time. Um, so I think that they've been very thoughtful um, with this project as well and seeking you know state funding and making sure that that you know, is not a huge impact for the average homeowner, which, um, you know, and it's a very needed project. I have a student at Blanchard right now, and so, <laughs> uh, and I'll have another student there in a couple years. So, uh, you know, it's really important to me that they have a, a healthy school to attend. And I'm sure, you know, if we have water coming in the roof, that can lead to other health concerns like mold. And, uh, you know, we don't want toxic mold in our school building. That'd be another problem I'm sure that you'd have to deal with as a facility director so I think you know this is a very worthwhile project but I'm not sure people are aware uh, you know 
what they're voting for in this ballot question because it does, you know, it has legalese in it, as Kathy and I were discussing. Um, (laughs) It's a little confusing, but I'd like Jeff to just talk about why this, he's, you've talked a little bit about it, but why it's just a crucial vote right now, especially in terms of the financing. Yes. Um, As I mentioned, we're, we're very fortunate to have been accepted into the Accelerated Repair Program. Uh, the opportunity to get back into that program may not exist in the future. Whether we approve it now at this point or down the road, the roof needs to be replaced. And if we don't approve it this time around, uh, the town, the taxpayers will be on the hook for the entire $6.5 million project. So wow. to get 48% reimbursed through the MSBA, it's, you know, it's, it's a real gift to the town. It, it's it's a lot of money, and uh, but uh, it could be a lot more if we don't vote to approve it now as part of question two. Wow, so we don't want to be penny wise and and pound foolish, right? So for $25 is what you're saying to the uh, cost of the average homeowner in Westford, we will get a a new roof. And tell us just a little bit about this new roof. Yeah, yeah. So the the new roof is going to include all new vapor barriers, which you touched upon, you know, anytime water gets into a building that can create a lot of internal environment issues. And uh, uh, before I go on, I really do want to tip my cap to the um, the, the custodial team uh, over there at Blanchard. They've done an amazing job sort of dealing with the uh, the fallout from, from these roof leaks that have happened over the years. So I, I can't thank them enough for the hard work they put every day to make sure that the environment is safe and clean for the kids and the staff that work in the building. So um, I can't thank them enough. Uh, but, but there's the, only so much they can do, I'm sure. Right, right, exactly. You know, a lot of a lot of buckets and you know things like that, dehumidification. But um, you know, they've done an amazing job just fighting the good fight over there, trying to wait to get this new roof done. So, um, but the new roof, new vapor barriers, roof drains, edge flashings, uh, and new insulation on the roof, um, and then it's going to come with a PVC membrane that has a 30-year warranty. So. Um, and then on top of all that, we've taken measures in the design of the roof to make it solar ready. So our goal is to have a uh, full vote, uh, photovoltaic system on the roof in the upcoming years. Because it is a flat roof, right? It is a flat roof. It's actually our second largest flat roof in town behind Westford Academy. So wow. it, really, it presents a great opportunity for us to get solar up there. And I think it's going to be a really great pilot opportunity for us to see what uh, the solar arrangements look like. Um, I think systematically, and this will come when we get the results of our school feasibility study coming and, and the capital plan that comes with that, but um, I think that this is our first run through to see what, you know, systematically going around town doing these roofs and making them, you know, f- fully solar is, is going to be an awesome opportunity. That's very exciting. Yeah, and it aligns with our net zero goals in town. And it does. And it, I would assume, would reduce our energy costs? Yes. Yep. Absolutely, because our goals are, you know, to have uh, net zero, I think, by 2030. Yep. And uh, this it would be a big advance in that direction. Yep. Yep. When my children were little in the schools, um, they um, they were building the new schools. They were building Chris Afuli, They were building Stony Brook Middle School. Mm-hmm. We were uh, renovating Westford Academy. And all of these buildings have such a huge investment, and we need to keep them up. And I think our town has done a very smart job at seeking funding that can help us to do that. So we're not going it alone. Yeah. Well, what will happen if it doesn't pass? Uh, well, I, I may have already said this, but yes. if it doesn't pass, um, we're still going to have a roof that needs to be repaired. And um, if it doesn't pass, we'll be on the hook for the entire $6.5 million, which will be a much harder pill to swallow for the town. So. And has the insurance companies given you any deadline for that? Um, that I don't know, actually. Okay. Um, I'd have to do a little investigating on that one. But uh, the, the bottom line is the deductible has gone up significantly. And, um, yeah, the, the yeah the, the, I don't believe they've given us a deadline. Okay. No, no. So my last question is, when would this new roof be built? Um, construction for the project is set to begin in June of 2024, so next June. Um, And as you can imagine, for the size of the roof, it's going to be quite the monumental project to complete over the course of one summer to have the building ready to go for the start of the school year. Um, So next. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you you have the ambitious goal of of doing this in the summertime, the hot summer, to have it ready for the kids in the fall. Yep. That's that's when we have to make these projects happen, when the kids are 
on vacation. So um, it's going to be a, a quite the flurry of activity over at Blanchard Middle School next summer. So fantastic! Yep. Wow, that's well. So well um, hopefully, voters support this infrastructure need in our town. Um, you know, I'm sure there's also hidden costs if we don't do it of staff time and. Uh, you know, you've already mentioned the Janet, the custodial work um, that has already happened. And, um, you know, that's an extra stress on our town staff as well. Um, so, you know, you have to factor in those costs as well if we don't do this project right now. So um, I think it's an important project and I hope voters support it. And thank you so much for coming out to talk to us about this today. We hope everyone who listens to this will get out and vote and get their neighbors to get out and vote. And remember, it's question two. Question two, the repair of the Blanchard, Lloyd G. Blanchard Middle School roof. Thank you so much, Jeff. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. And now we move on to ballot question three, which is the ballot question regarding Indigenous Peoples Day. And our guest today is Joe Diamond from the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Welcome, Joe. Can you introduce yourself and tell us um, a little bit about the DEI Committee and what uh, your initiatives are? Thank you. And by the way, thanks for inviting me to your podcast. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Joe Diamond. We live in Westwood. We've been here since uh, 1993. Uh, our, our children went through the school system. And now they're they're launched, if you will. It's been a it's been it's been wonderful, uh, and part of the inspiration for me being on um, the finance committee, on the the affordable housing trust committee, uh, and now on the DEI committee is to give back uh, to a community that's given so much to us. It's uh, it's a welcoming community. In fact, we formed uh, a temple, a, a synagogue here in Westford for a time for about 10 to 12 years and again very welcoming um and and we would we i we my family uh want to want to be able to give back so um and we have no plans on leaving by the way even though our kids are launched we're gonna we're gonna stay here we love being in westford um the dei committee uh was was formed uh and it's sort of the end of uh 2020 uh and it was in response in part to local uh, acts of intolerance as well as as national uh, and, and i think in part in response to the tragedy uh, of george floyd uh, and so the select board uh, developed a charge for the committee and then and then and then helped put the committee together uh, and i'll just if i can i'd just like to read the charge uh, the committee will identify needs or part of it around fostering acceptance and valuing diversity and discourage prejudice and discrimination against any person, group, or other status protected by law on account of race, creed, color, income, religion, national origin, ancestry, gender, sexual orientation, veteran status, age, or disability. The committee will review town and school policies and procedures and make recommendations to ensure that they advance equity and diversity where the committee has identified deficiencies. So in short, the committee was established to um, foster diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, in the town, to build on what already exists here, uh, to foster a belonging, and to advise the school committee and to advise um, the select board uh, when it comes to matters related to, uh, to that charge. Uh, and so we've uh, brought to the, the select board different ideas um, we also uh, spoken with the school committee. We can get into that process related to Indigenous Peoples Day, but um, we, we've we also sponsored um, events that foster understanding of, of an embrace of our differences. Um, and again, building on the kind of community that Westford is, which is diverse, a very diverse community, both from a cultural nationality perspective, also from an economic perspective. Uh, and we see that um, this this committee uh, also brings to its table uh, a diverse group of people as well who are extremely committed uh, to um, doing what we can uh, to make Westford, uh, you know, the sort of best community that we can together. Thank you. Well, that that brings us to today and the initiative that you have before us, which is ballot question three. 
And ballot questions, as you know, tend to be a little bit of, of legal ease. But we'd love for you to explain to the voters in plain English, you know, what it says and what it's about. And can you tell us also, why is it needed now? Well, those are great questions. And since we have a little time, let me let me just start with a little context uh, about the ballot question. Um, there are three ways to um, make changes in, in Westford and in, in many communities. Uh, one is through town meeting. Uh, the other is is through the select board, uh, and then the third is through a ballot, uh, and all of those involve uh, sort of a conversation, if you will, with the people of Westford. Um, they each have their virtues, um, and in this case, we've we've been able to interact uh, with all three. Um, this ballot question was first discussed in 2020, in the fall of 2020, at town meeting. Town meeting directed it to uh, the DEI committee. Uh, we've uh, consulted with the select board on this as well, um, actually bringing language to the select board on a couple of occasions and the select board approving the language of the ballot question. And then now it's it's up uh, for a vote, um, if you will, a community-wide response uh, to the ballot question. Um, so we're, we're happy with the process. It's, it has taken uh, three years. It's involved uh, research, conversations, um, responses uh, back and forth uh, between, um, if you will, the DEI committee and the people of of Westford. Uh, the way it reads, and I, I can just read the first part and then explain kind of what it what it means is that the select board uh, declare the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day, superseding local references uh, to Columbus Day, and, and recommend that it be observed by the people of Westford. And it goes on, but essentially, it's in sync with the ballot questions or the initiatives that were approved by other local uh, uh, city or town uh, councils or select boards um, in 20 different communities across the state. We think we're on the, the crest of a wave here in terms of this kind of reckoning uh, that's taking place locally and state level and on the national level when it comes to addressing not only this intolerance, but many different kinds of intolerances. Um, there are about 17 different states that have actually statewide approved um, this initiative to approve Indigenous Peoples Day, superseding Columbus Day. And they include Maine and Vermont, but also uh, Texas and, and Michigan, um, South Dakota, Virginia, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Mexico, um, Minnesota, Oklahoma, and, and so on, Iowa included. Uh, so we see this as something that is part of a process uh, where it's essentially really important to, again, inspired by what we need to do to address intolerances that we've seen on the rise, um, involved in this reckoning to reassess uh, history uh, and to make and to make a point about the importance of um, making indigenous people um, visible. Uh, and to make sure that we not only point out and make sure that we are completely aware of the tragedy of the history of indigenous people in this country, but also raising up um, their contributions. Um, you know, I, I also think it's important to, to note that, there, that, that this is a conversation that's taking place in different places across the country. Um, and by different people who are, I would say, keen observers. Uh, I just would like to, to quote Mandy Van uh, Hoovelin, who is the cultural interpreter, coordinator at the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian. She, she points out what these changes accomplish piece by piece is visibility for Native people in the United States. Until Native people are fully seen in our society and in everyday life, we can't accomplish these bigger changes. As long as Native people remain invisible, it's much easier for people to look past those real issues and those real concerns within those communities. We've talked, we talked about the, the approach, you know, what would be the appropriate approach. And after reviewing uh, the language of, of different proposals in, in Massachusetts and in other states, um, 
Indigenous Peoples Day taking place on Columbus Day and superseding Columbus Day made the most sense for us in the context of the importance of, of looking back on history and taking a, a critical look at history um, and understanding that, that change can be can be difficult uh, at times. But um, our, our point is that um, it's important to reassess, uh, to, to think about the connection between um, Columbus uh, and Native peoples, not only in this, um, not only in the, in the United States, but in the Americas in total. Um, it, you know, there's another another point that was made in National Geographic magazine is, is that the connection is that Columbus's arrival led to the forceful taking of land and set the stage for widespread uh, death and loss of indigenous ways of life. Uh, and so, like we've reassessed. Uh, other figures in history, like Confederate generals, like we, it's important to reassess here, and we do see that there's a connection. And quite honestly, we've um, we've seen, and we know of many different groups in Massachusetts, which we can go over a little bit later, that are supportive of Indigenous Peoples Day. Yes, um, I actually yeah. wanted to ask you about that next. Um, uh, you, uh, I. I've been very interested in to, to see that the groups who are supporting uh, this initiative, and I know that October is Italian American Heritage Month, and the Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day has uh, not only supported the legislative agenda in the state house, but you know has been very vocal on the issue. Can you talk about the other interest groups that are supporting the initiative? Yeah, I think it's a really good point. We we urge folks to delve into this as well, um, to, to look at the information that's available, to look at the websites. There is legislation that's at the State House that would do what we're talking about. Um, the Italian Americans for Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, and just quoting from their website, was formed in solidarity with thousands of Native peoples from many tribal nations who live in Massachusetts who are working to rename Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. There's an affinity between those those of us who came here are related to people who came here early and suffered from intolerance. Um, I think there's a connection between, for example, Italian Americans and indigenous people in terms of facing intolerance. And I think there's that sensitivity that's expressed here. Um, we all of us who <clears throat> were, were new and those who were, are from other countries who live here in Westford have uh, histories that they can be very proud of. Uh, and so we're not in any way taking away from that. Um, in fact, we celebrate that history. And I think that's the spirit of that particular group's um, point. Um, there are other groups as well that I could um, Maybe just give us you. one or two. Uh, no, one is, one is MA, massindigenousagenda.org. One is Indigenous Peoples Day MA. And the other one is uh, the Massachusetts Center for the Native American Awareness, among among several in Massachusetts, and there are others in other parts of the, the country. Yeah, this definitely seems to be a movement. You know, it's not just Westford deciding um, this issue by itself, isolated, but it definitely is part of a a larger movement. I think that's been happening over several years, um, and I think having those supporters is great. Um, but we also have supporters in Westford, and you have received the endorsement of the school committee. Um, can you talk about that? Absolutely. That was a very, um, we're very grateful for the opportunity to have spoken to the school committee a, a couple of times on this. Actually, we spoke to the school committee prior to this at the end of last year related to Holocaust Remembrance Day in Westford. Um, what we wanted to do in terms of that conversation that, that we that we talked about earlier related to the, the different um, bodies in Westford that represent the people of Westford, uh, the school committee is also one of those. And, and by our charge, we, we um, offer advice, respectful advice. And so we visited with the school committee uh, and asked for their support of the ballot question. Uh, and after a couple of conversations, they they provided it in the form of a resolution, uh, which was also, in fact, improved on uh, the way that we expressed 
uh, what we wanted to to do here and, and why. Uh, and so I would encourage people to go to uh, the DEI section of our of the Westford website or the school committee section of the website to read the resolution. I can just read, if it's okay with you, I can just read a couple of, of, the, of the clauses in it. Yeah, um, sure. Again, very well written and something that we appreciate in terms of the school committee's understanding and appreciation. And before I actually read the paragraph, let me just say that the conversations were very gratifying, not only because they were they were sort of fulsome and had a lot of perspectives conveyed, but also because the students who are part of the school committee, the student representatives, were very impressive. And they talked about their nuanced understanding of history. Uh, they, they talked about how they uh, looked deeply into that period of the age of exploration, which also had elements of exploitation. And so they, they spoke about how they had a, a deeper understanding and that this caused them not to ignore, but to actually uh, dig deeper. Um, so w uh, here's a clause. Whereas the, the Westford School Committee acknowledges the suffering of the indigenous peoples in the United States, including historical genocides and forced relocations, but also ongoing systemic racism that perpetuates high rates of poverty and income inequality, exacerbating disproportionate health, education, and social crises. And it, it moves on with, with the expression of, of its support uh, for for this um, yes, uh, I think resolution. You. Valid question. By the way, I do want to say that uh, Westford actually sits on land once occupied by the Nipmuc people here in Massachusetts. Thanks. Sorry. That's okay. Um, so uh, just as a final uh, word, um, what do you want to say to the voters of Westford before Tuesday, besides, of course, to vote for the wonderful candidates and the other important initiatives that are also on the ballot? And how can people get involved if they're interested in um, learning more or, you know, helping out? You know, how, how can they find resources if they want to talk to their you. neighbors? Great questions. Um, in a past life, I have a master's degree in political science, so I really um, embrace and appreciate the process. And I urge people to vote as a way of, of being involved. So we, we really hope uh, that people vote and we thank them for their consideration of this uh, of this ballot question. Um, and, and and please uh, do more research beyond beyond what you're hearing here. And there's a lot to look into and to, and to read about. When it comes to participating or involvement, um, the DEI committee would welcome um, more members. Um, there's a process that people can, a pretty easy one, if you go to the Westford website to, to put in an application to be on a committee. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and we would love to, uh, to add members uh, to this committee. The members that are on the committee are sort of given expression to their enthusiasm, their, their commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion, and belonging. Uh, and and we know there are other folks out there who are interested just based on those who visit and join us from the public from our meeting. So please consider that uh, as well. And is the committee open to anyone, any resident of Westford? Do you need to be like a citizen or a you know registered voter, or is it open to anyone who's a resident? Um, a resident, of, my understanding is a, a resident of Westford uh, is. Uh, we've had actually we had college students. Um, you know, joining us. So it's it, it, it's um, something that um, is uh, is new, um, but is I think is is always evolving because uh, there's always a lot to do. One thing I didn't mention uh, is that part of what we we are doing and part of what I think is appreciated by the town is helping uh, the town sort of across town departments understand and engage with diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. Um, and if I could just make one last. Um, point uh, is my uh, sincere hope that people come out to vote and and urge folks to vote in favor of this ballot question, ballot question three on Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we wish you the best of luck with this ballot question, and we hope to have you back at some point mm -hmm. to talk more about the committee and learn more about all that you do in the town of Westford. Thank you for your service to the town. And thank you very much uh, for this great opportunity. Well, have a great day. Thank you. So just to wrap up for today, we want to remind the voters of Westford that Tuesday, May 2nd, is our town election. There are candidates running for all of our boards and the election of our town moderator. We 
urge you to vote and encourage your neighbors to vote. If you wish to know where you're voting, we have two polling places open from 7 a.m. till 8 p.m. They are Westford Academy and the Stony Brook Middle School. If you're wondering where is your polling place, you can go to the town website. WestfordMA.gov. WestfordMA.gov, that's right. And go down to voter information. That will take you through several prompts so that you can find where you need to vote. Thanks, Kathy. Yeah, that's a very important election, so we hope um, to see you at the polls. Um, Just to review what's on the ballot, we have, uh, you can also view a sample ballot at westfordma.gov. If you go through the election information, you can find your polling place and you can view a sample ballot. Um, So in addition to the candidates, we have three ballot questions. Question one, demolish the building Uh, the old fire building, which is in the town center, 51 Main Street, and it would rebuild a a new building for um, town offices, um, especially the uh, technology department, which is currently in a not very good facility in a flood zone. So we have all of our servers for the town in a flood zone, not the best setup. So this is to um, move that department and a few other departments into the center of town, into a new building, and it would also have um, a larger meeting space um, for town events and for town meetings and uh, the select board meetings. Um, So that is question one. And then question two, we discussed, which is the Blanchard Middle School roof replacement project. And then question three is the question um, to rename in, uh, the second Monday in October as Indigenous Peoples Day. All very important initiatives brought by um, our town before the voters on Tuesday, May 2nd. Encourage everyone to please come out and vote on May 2nd. And, and I think today. Westford Cat has some <coughs> candidate information too. If you go to Westford Cat, oh, yes. there's candidate uh, minutes. I think all the candidates come and record a little informational minute about themselves and their what why they're running. Um, and even more than that, Westford Cat has uh, recorded the League of Women Voters Candidate Night, and you can right. Go. That was an that was a good night. And so th- that gives the, each candidate a chance to speak for themselves and you can get a sense of who the candidates are, recognize them, and uh, choose who you wish to vote for and who you want on your all-important town committees. Right, and these committees are so important because they set the budget, they, uh, you know, enact policies for our town. Um, yes. You know, so they're all very important things that impact and the votes that your they life are, day-to-day. Exactly, and they're far-reaching into the future as well. So... Again, we are um, need to know Westford if you would like to reach us. We have a Facebook page, um, Need to Know Westford Podcast, an Instagram page, Need to Know Westford Podcast, and you can email us at need to the number two know uh, Westford at gmail.com. So thank you, Beth. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time.